All right, we're just going to mix it up on this presidential race. We've got two great guests. Stay with us. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Takeo Comfort Solutions. Uh, there's really no introduction needed for this presidential race. Uh, welcome in on this Friday evening. I've got uh, the head of the Taubman Institute at Brown University. Jim Marone is back, and our friend Noel Rubinton is here to provide some journalistic perspective. He shocked and horrified me earlier this week by suggesting that Trump may have benefited from or may have won the debate. I'm not sure which. Uh, but he's got a point on that, and we'll let him describe it. In the meantime, here's, uh, remember, on Friday evenings, if you're a regular viewer, you know. If you're a new viewer, welcome. There's so many of you. Thank you. Uh, on Thursday, we tape the Friday show. So if all heck broke loose politically on Friday, you'll have to wait till Monday for us to catch up on that. Or on the radio, of course, weekdays 3 till 6. In the meantime, here's, uh, you know, I don't know, a summary of the latest. Donald Trump defended his comments about former Miss Universe Alicia Machado, whom he had called Miss Piggy because she had gained weight. Trump said he was trying to help her. But they wanted to fire her. I saved her job because I said that's going to be ruinous. And I've done that with a number of the young ladies where I saved their job, but the staff itself. And you know what happened? Look what I get out of it. I get nothing. Hillary Clinton first mentioned Machado during Monday night's debate. During campaign stops Wednesday, Trump also mocked Clinton's break from campaigning to recover from pneumonia. Day off, day off, day off, all those day offs, and then she can't even make it to her car. Isn't it tough? Clinton joined Bernie Sanders in a push to win over millennials. And there is no group of Americans who have more at stake in this election than young Americans. Because so much of what will happen will affect your lives, your jobs. A recent CBS News poll shows young people are the least enthusiastic about the election, and more than a third of those likely to vote are supporting third party candidates. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, after last night, or two nights ago, I, I, I don't know how much more Gary Johnson can, can establish credibility if you're actually paying attention. But anyway, Noel Rubinson, Jim Rohn, back at it. Hey. Uh, I don't need to jumpstart you. Uh, I, you're always ready to go. Yeah, well, this this election. By the is, way, wouldn't uh, it wouldn't it be days off, not day day I offs? I think you're right. I mean, we're all that kind of academics here. Yeah, yeah let's, well, let's not, mark you them down. Are, uh, if, if the Donald is running on uh, grammar no. and full sentences, he's in trouble. Well, then again, the, the electorate rep reportedly um, isn't focused on anything like that. You know, that last uh, segment you just ran on millennials, boy, that's a big one. Uh, millennials are liberal, much more liberal. We know that. They're the only group that's that... because you've got a hold of them and you're, and, and you're shoving all that stuff down their throat. That's right. It's my fault. And uh, <laughs> uh, Noel's probably at fault, too. <laughs> but they don't like either of these candidates at all. They don't really like either party. So here you've got a bunch of people who are liberals, and if you're a Democrat, you've got to be saying, let's go for them. They don't like you if you're a Democrat. They don't like you if you're a Republican. You're yelling about the wrong stuff. So that's one of the big questions in this election. What are the young kids going to do? Yes, and, and I, and I uh, well, you, want, you have a, your take on that? Because I, I, I offered something earlier in the week that I'll, 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 I'll look it up. What's your thought on, on oh, the young people? I think people? that Gary Johnson, who you know, most years would be the libertarian, would be a good candidate, is really... He can't put it together. He can't put it together. He's had, now he even calls it himself his Aleppo moments. Yeah. Last, it's uh, moments now. Did, I don't know if you caught it. Two nights ago on MSNBC with Chris Matthews, so they're having a, a libertarian town hall. And Matthews asked, I don't think it was a gotcha question. He's just, you know, tell me what world leader you're, you're especially fond of. And he couldn't come up with one. And, he's, and he admits, you know what, I'm having a Aleppo moment. <coughs> as, if, as if that's something that, you know, he can fall back on. I guess, I, I guess you can say, you know, I say, you know, brain spasm, something like that. Now we all say it and we'll refer to it as, well, I'm having an Aleppo moment. I think uh, he's going to be hard to be a safe harbor for people who want to protest. Bill Weld, you know, topping that ticket might have been a better, you know, dynamic. So usually we get... Weld must be going crazy. Right. Right. Usually we get the effect of the melt for third party candidates. Everybody gets it towards the end. Every once in a while, they get the big vote. And this year, you got the two third party candidates plus 15 to 20 percent undecided. That is really, really unusual in September. To your point about young people, and believe me, this is you know, one young person doesn't a generation make, right? But um, a uh, millennial, college age, that I am close to. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. All right. Don't make any assumptions. We'll protect identity. But I actually did ask 
you know, did you want to watch the debate? You know, would you, I'm reading a text. Who would you vote for? Trump. Why, I ask. Well, no good reason. But he's a blank blank, and maybe that's how we need to get things going. Hillary is just a bad actress. I feel like Trump is himself most of the time, and Hillary's an actress, and will say whatever people want to hear. Trump doesn't say the smartest things, <coughs> but he had a consistent personality throughout the whole debate. Consistent blank blank. But it goes to this thing of authenticity yeah. that we keep hearing about millennials, that they would just want to keep it real more so than they have an ideology. Is that true? It's, it's half true. They do have an ideology. They're more left than people think. When you, when you ask them lots of questions, because they're not homeowners, because they're Yeah, they haven't less, paid taxes yet. But even if you look over time at each generation, this generation started more left than other generations. But for the rest of it, you're right. They don't like the parties. They don't like all the stuff that people are doing. Authenticity counts for a lot. And they don't like arguments. Why do you think they're going for Bernie Sanders? Because he's a real character. And it's a really good point. Is Trump, he's just Trump, he does things that I look at and I think, oh my God, what's he done now? But if, what you're, if your touchstone is authenticity, are you seeing him differently? It's a great question. You know, I, I don't know that Gary Johnson brings a whole level of authenticity. Maybe he does because he's softer spoken, but they got to pay attention to it. Are the millennials uh, in this generation actually paying attention to issues? Because, frankly, after further investigation, not on text, uh, we talked that one out a little bit. <clears throat> and, uh, oh, I didn't know that. 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 Well, maybe I have to think about that differently. You know, so, I mean, the, it's important to probe this younger generation to see if they're paying attention. What do you think? Well, I, I, I agree. Uh, but I think this is one of the things that's definitely keeping Trump alive, even as he does these things, which to most candidates it would be the, they would have touched the third rail and be done. Trump is kept alive by his authenticity and his ability to attract people who you wouldn't expect. Authenticity is the word I use, but I don't know that it sticks to him. Yeah. Being different doesn't mean authentic. Yeah, being way, way out there. I want to go back to something you just said about, um, about the sort of undecideds and so forth and, and not having done your homework like this unknown right. Uh, right. correspondent of yours. The annoying thing for us, you know, we're all following this. Most of your uh, listeners, right, they, they know everything. People who are really following this, they know how they're going to vote. Uh, they've already chosen sides. So you've got a group in the middle, like mm -hmm. the young man on that text, who are not paying much attention. They sort of have a few thoughts, but they don't, they don't really know very much. They're the ones who are going to decide the election. So if you're a viewer out there and you, you really know who you're going to vote for, forget it. You're already, you've been factored into the equation. The percentage that we're going after now, that both campaigns are going after, are people who kind of tune into the, to the late shows and hear what Jimmy Kimmel has to say. And so it's a very not very well yet, well educated or up to speed part of the electorate. They're going to decide this election. It's horrifying, isn't it? I think it's just real. I don't. I don't think it's horrifying. Yeah, I think that's you know. I think that's the challenge for the candidates is to find a way to reach out to them. So, I, I think that both candidates have that chance. There's you don't think it's frightening? Um, you know, I have no data to prove this, and maybe I'm just getting to that place where I look back now and and uh, wax on about how in my day went to school uphill both ways and four feet of mm. snow when men were men and sheep were sheep and da 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 da. Maybe. But I, I see in general, not just with young people, but in general, less and less acumen. Civics, government, news, God almighty, policy debate? That's yeah. way down. It, 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 has it always been that bad? When uh, we first, when they first started doing polls, when polls really became scientific in the 1940s, a bunch of political scientists go out and they come back and they say, oh my God, throw out this democracy. These people don't know anything. And it's a famous set of articles in the 40s and 50s with everybody just saying, what's the point of voting? We ask the voters questions and they don't, they barely know their own names. And then a new generation of pollsters came in and said, you know, if you look at the whole mass of the society, they kind of cancel each other out, and it kind of works pretty well. You wouldn't want to give it to experts. You wouldn't want to give it to the sort of leaders in Washington. All we got left is the people. And if you look across the great, it's like Noel just said, it's the way it is. It's the way it's always been. Yeah. And and I, and I also think that part of that disinterest is because people are so turned off. 
by what they've been hearing. You, you, every time you come here, you talk about that, and I, and, and I think you've, you've got your thumb on it. Um, there's such a dissatisfaction. I don't know. I don't know if it's necessarily with the status quo. It's just such dissatisfaction with the this, right? That they've tuned it out and are looking for something new, and this guy comes along sounding different, right. and they say, what the heck? But over the next four weeks, do the, is enough understood based on what he's done, how he's performed, and what he may do for them to actually check in and say, wait a second. You know, I think Be careful of what you ask for. What do you think? You uh, we won't know until we know. But I think that you know, we're definitely in that place where you know, we have this group of undecideds. Nobody knows who they are and basically what they're going to decide on, and they're going to decide the election. Because I think one of the things that from the debate was that nobody's mind was changed or made up their mind. I can't believe that anybody changed their mind based on what they heard in that debate. So it's all about the people who either weren't listening very hard or kind of saying, oh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. At the same well, time, those who didn't know seemingly really went Hillary's way, at least in round one, right? It appears to me that the more you see of Trump, the less you like him. So it, at his convention versus Hillary's convention, he lost a lot of ground. And then he made it up again. And then at 90 minutes of Donald Trump, and people, I think there's a group of people who say, well, not so great. Now, the polls from this debate will come out, the, the solid polls will come out on Friday, right after this show. So if you're there on Friday, go to Real Clear Politics and look how the average has changed. Oh, what do you mean? Uh, Donald said that all of the polls went his way. You know, all those online driven drudge 80 20 polls. When we come back, we'll talk about the week next week because it's going to be important. Stay with us. I have much better judgment than she does. There's no question about that. I also have a much better temperament than she has. You know? I think my strongest asset, maybe by far, is my temperament. I have a winning temperament. I know how to win. She does not have Secretary how to win. Clinton. Wait. The AFL-CIO the other day, <coughs> behind the blue screen, I don't know who you were talking to, Secretary Clinton, but you were totally out of control. I said, there's a person with a temperament that's got a problem. Secretary Clinton. Woo, okay. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I don't do a lot of tweeting during debates. I know a lot of people in our industry do. But I just tweeted out, you know, Trump, you know, says he's got the best temperament. As he, he discusses his great temperament intemperately. Yeah, it, was, it was just unbelievable. The, the oxymoronic type of visual that you were looking at right there as he was acting intemperately talking about his temperament. I just couldn't believe it. In, and he doesn't even get it. In the rearview mirror, there's always a moment during these campaigns that, in retrospect, captures the whole thing. The Dukakis in the tank, in the, in the, in the tank remember that one, or 47%. In the fog of war, you can't see it exactly, but in retrospect, that clip you just showed, and it's playing again and again, that might be the clip that summarizes this whole campaign. If, Hil if Hillary wins uh, by three or four points, which now is beginning to look quite possible, m my bet is that moment you just showed, that's going to be the summary clip four years from now when we want to summarize this whole thing, that's going to be it. Word is that, uh, and some good reporting, I think, has been done on this, New York Times, NBC, others, that it's really turbulent right now inside the Trump camp, that they're trying to knock his head around and say, hey, listen, you cannot do this the way you think you can do this and pull this whole thing off. Think there's any substance to that? Oh, I have no doubt. He's a tough person to deal with, I'm sure. I read something in the Washington Post today that suggested that during his debate prep, which everybody says was not very extensive, it was hard to keep his attention. That he wasn't paying attention even to the paltry prep yet. He's got his own agenda. That's agenda or or deficiency? Temperament. He's got his own. But, but this notion, this is this is something that's constantly come out. The co-author of the Art of the Deal. He keeps saying, I couldn't keep this guy straight for three or four minutes, ever. Not once or twice, ever over two years. Um, there's a conscientiousness vacuum, it seems, going on here. I wonder if people are tuning into that, even those who think he's the change agent forever. Yeah. Can he concentrate for five minutes on something that's really important? I wonder. I think a lot of this is coming down to, 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 to this issue. He doesn't have the temperament. People keep saying, you have to do this. Trump is Trump. He is what he is. And the people who have aligned themselves, like Paul Ryan, are now, I mean, they're in a hot seat. 
He's not going to change. It's not like the second debate is going to show us But when you say he is Trump. what he is, fill in, fill in the blank. He is what he is. What does that mean? What is your answer? Well, I don't know if you'll invite me back in the show for saying this, but You're, a 12-year-old bully. He's a 12-year-old kid on the schoolyard. Who, yeah. All right, get out. But don't ever come back. What are you kidding me? I, 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 I've used much, much worse. We're seeing it's, him in real time. Yeah. Let's think about Lyndon Johnson. Now, he was probably one of the nastiest people ever to be president of the United States. But people didn't know it at the time, certainly not the American people, because media attention, he wasn't out front as much. So we're seeing the real Trump. That doesn't mean that he could be as smart as Lyndon Johnson was, who was one of the most masterful He's brilliant. people. But it doesn't, I'm not sure the temperament alone should you know, disqualify. It's By the way, true. that HBO movie on Johnson is phenomenal. Have you seen it? Yeah. It, it? I mean, it really gives you an indication of, uh, of, of, of who he was. Well, look, media platforms, you know, and a guy who's built his business and saved his business on a number of occasions on promotion right. skill um, is the guy running for the presidency. Yeah. But they're very different job qualifications, aren't they? You know, know, the criteria for the gigs are very different. We, we read before the debate that Hillary's plan was to get under his skin and watch him. And lots of people, including myself, thought, what a stupid plan. I mean, all, the only... All Trump has to do is sit there and not take the I don't bait. think she had to do much. And she didn't have to. She called him Donald, worked him over a little bit, boom, big explosion. Well, what's going to happen in what's going to happen in, in international conferences and summit meetings? It's a, it is. I mean, I think a lot of people, a lot of Republicans, are beginning to think this is a frightening moment for American democracy. I, I think in some sense the next debate will be a good test whether it confirms that. Although it's a different format, the next debate is a town hall. Yes, but that's true. will he kind of adjust his act or is this who he is? I think that's going to make it. But we, you know, we've had this. Um, after the convention, they sat him down, this new team, and said, you've got to stick to the teleprompter. And they did a good job. And for four weeks, he stuck to it. But then once he was on for 90 minutes. But on the debate, did you notice for about 10 minutes, you heard the kind of the almost like sedated Donald Trump voice. And then it broke and he was himself. That's right. For the first 15 minutes, I was, I was telling my friends, President Trump, right. he looked fantastic. Yeah, but you know what it's about? It's about the content. It was about trade. Yeah. If there's any issue that it's wheelhouse for him, that he thinks it's wheelhouse at least, it's trade. He's done business internationally. He has significant thoughts on trade, tariff, TPP, all of that. When you know this, as, as someone who, who teaches, when you are giving a great presentation yeah, to your students, you know. when you're really in tune with your material, you do a wonderful job. Your students come to tests more prepared. They feel more comfortable taking them. You know, when you're well-researched and you're writing, you're writing, you know, just... Yeah. But when you're in territory where you don't know what the hell you're talking about, that's when the wheels start to come off. Right. So I, I don't think he was necessarily more presidential. He was more comfortable with the topics, seems to me. He's got 15 minutes of topic. <laughs> that's what you're saying. Well, And, it's, and I, that's what it looked like. Well, that's, that goes to the preparation thing. If you don't want to study up and, and, and be more versatile and, and comfortable with the material, You've got the wheels problem. are going to come off. I think it also was this, you know, the, the Clinton plan worked. I mean, look at the end when he, where she baited him about the woman in the beauty pot contest, and he's saying, where did you find that out? I mean, he hadn't thought of answering that question. It was pretty clear. Yeah, but no, what happens on sleeping on it? I mean, it's one thing to throw up over the, uh, on a debate. The next morning on Fox and Friends, he's embellishing, talking about how, you know, she gained an enormous amount of weight. By the way, you know how much weight she gained? 15 pounds. It's, Christ, it's, I can do that in a weekend. <laughs> it's three days later, and he's still talking about it. Yeah, right. And, and this is his problem. He's he doesn't let go. You lose one, walk away from it. He can't do that. Well, there's a big, deep story here that we're going to be talking about for years after this election. Both parties are in trouble. The parties kind of got into their configuration, current configuration, around 1980. They've both run out of steam. They've both put up people who you look at them and you think, this is the best. We got 320 million people. This is the best we can do. And if you're a party leader, you have to think, you know, it's time to reboot. And we're getting this solid message. That's what the millennials are telling us to get back to this story. This is the, this is the deep underlying kind of political science of it all. Time for a reboot for both parties. When we come back, we'll talk about this little thing called the vice presidential debate, which may leave a lot of people wanting. We'll be right back. 
Uh, welcome back. So, you know, podiums and candidates, of course, you know, late next week on the 9th, I believe, is the second presidential debate, uh, the town hall version. But on uh, Tuesday night, the 4th, uh, these guys known as Pence and Kane are going to get together. And I wonder, I wonder, yeah, right? Yeah. I wonder if at least those who watch it, which will be significantly less, I guess, than the 81 million that watch the, the big one, whether we'll all be left wanting, saying, why not one of these two? Hmm. Right? Because they'll look like at least traditional presidential candidates, won't they? Yes. And um, they won't have any effect whatsoever on the outcome of this election, but the very high probability is we'll see one of them again. So this is an audition for the future. And well, I'll, I'll tell, tell you, you Pence what. Pence has sold a lot of his soul. He has sucked up a lot yeah. of stuff to be able to hang in here this long. You think it's a long-term calculation, or do you think it's... Oh, well, definitely. For him, it was the opportunity of his life to be on a national ticket. And I think that he's actually managed to pull back on some things which he just couldn't... He hasn't Trump sold on. himself out for the things that he's responsible right. for. But his excuse-making for Trump is just... It's almost funny to watch him dodge bullets and try to reframe questions. I'd like to questions. see a debate between him and uh, Ted Cruz, who are really equal conservatives. Pence I know and Cruz. Have, yeah, Pence and Cruz. No problem, because you're going to get it. Yeah. Um, Pence was a guy who was looking to lose his re-election campaign. He's now been shot up onto the stage. If Trump loses, he's one of the front runners in the, in the next uh, in the next. And Ted of Cruz, to get that debate come 2020, had to sell his soul even worse, sell his father and his wife out to support Donald Trump. And uh, I stand before the convention. I get booed. I don't endorse him. I go back to Texas. They beat me up. I endorse him. Tough narrative to make sense out of. But Cruz will do it, and then Pence and he will go at it. You sure it. that, uh, oh, yes, that no. Kane and Pence won't make enough of an impression to secure the needle for, for either one of those two candidates? If one of them no. created a huge problem, well, but yeah. it would have to be... Even if Dan Quayle didn't make even a Dan difference. Even Dan Quayle, yeah. So Remember like if, if Dan Quayle isn't going to make a difference, these people aren't, aren't that yeah. bad. Yeah, it's, it's, I hate to say, uh, you guys are showing it on your... your I hate to tell people not to bother, but it's not going to affect this time. But it's a big audition for four years from now. Right. I think that's well, the line. Well, uh, um, I, I know we're not having any fun, so maybe I hope you come back after debates two and three. Okay. But what do you think? I mean, let me mar mark you. You've been very cagey with your predictions. What's going to happen here on November 8th? I think it's still up in the air. I don't, I don't think it, yeah. I'm okay, sorry. It's honest. It, you know, it's honest. Political scientists say that the whole storm and drug of the campaign doesn't matter. Clinton went into the campaign about 2.5 ahead. Never mind all this stuff. She'll win by 2.5. With the big, uh, in, the, in, in the national in the na In the national election. But the electoral college. Uh, in, and if she's ahead by 2.5, three points, Pennsylvania, New Hampshire will fall into her lap. Uh, what's my confidence in this prediction? About 51%. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of what Noel said anyway. All right, uh, final word when we come back. Thanks, guys. Thanks. <laughs> Coming up on the Monday program, former mayor of the city of Providence, Joe Paolino, is back talking about his plans for Kennedy Plaza, a challenge about homelessness, and, of course, those who are, you know, peddling for dough and all of that. He seems to be fair about it, but... A lot of roadblocks to getting a solution to improve the climate. We'll see you then, and back on the radio two or three. Good night.